I could not help but overhear you spreading your ignorance about anthropogenic global warming and climate change. It was not ignorance. I became an expert on the subject by reading blogs on the internet. You're right. That definitely puts you on par with climate scientists who have spent years in study obtaining their degrees and longer performing research in the field. How silly of me to put more confidence in scientific research spanning over 100 years and thousands of studies. In actuality, you are animated proof that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. If you know so much, what do you think I got wrong? You botched so many aspects of global warming theory it is hard to know where to begin. But let's start with the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and its role in the greenhouse effect. The concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is only 365 parts per million. Wrong. CO2 levels are now at 392 parts per million and rising. The atmospheric concentration of CO2 has increased 40% in just over 100 years. CO2 levels are now higher than they have been in the last 800,000 years and likely the last several million years. That is still too small an amount to make a difference in the greenhouse effect. Besides, higher levels are good for plants since CO2 is essential to photosynthesis. It's ironic that on one hand you recognize that a small amount of CO2 is essential to all plant life, and yet claim on the other hand that it is too small an amount to impact the global greenhouse effect. In fact, carbon dioxide is the primary long-term driver of the greenhouse effect. Without carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, our planet would be a frozen ball of ice floating in space. That is not possible. Water vapor is a much stronger greenhouse gas than CO2, and it is much more prevalent in the atmosphere. That is true, but do you know how long water vapor remains in the atmosphere once it is emitted? No I do not. Of course you don't. It's hard to believe you remember to keep breathing. Water vapor cycles through the atmosphere in only 7 to 10 days, which is why the atmospheric concentration of water vapor varies so much from place to place. This is why the Earth has jungles in some regions and deserts in others. How about CO2? Do you know how long carbon dioxide remains in the atmosphere once it is emitted? No I do not. Again, not surprised. You probably don't believe in evolution either since your existence is an argument against it. Carbon dioxide can take hundreds or even thousands of years to cycle through the atmosphere, many thousands of times longer than water vapor. This is why CO2 can accumulate in the atmosphere over time. But rising CO2 levels are due to outgassing from the soils and the oceans as the planet warms, not human activities. It is amazing that you manage to get dressed in the morning. While rising temperatures can result in more carbon dioxide being released through natural processes, the Earth's oceans and land masses are absorbing much more carbon dioxide than they are releasing. This is why surface waters around the world are becoming more acidic as they absorb larger amounts of CO2. But human emissions of CO2 are a fraction of those from natural sources. Apparently the hamster in your brain wheel is narcoleptic. Natural sources of CO2 have been counterbalanced by natural absorbers of CO2 over thousands of years, resulting in a near-zero sum. Now human industrial activities are generating new emissions much faster than natural absorbers can keep up. This has resulted in an imbalance, and rising atmospheric concentrations of CO2. Even if humans are driving up CO2, it does not matter. Current temperature variations are a result of changes in the sun. You should probably check the scabs on those dragging knuckles of yours. While changes in solar activity can influence temperatures here on Earth and have in the past, solar activity has been steady or in decline for more than 30 years while global temperatures have risen. Also, if solar activity were responsible for current temperature trends, you would expect to see warming across all layers of the atmosphere. Instead, the upper level stratosphere is cooling while the lower level troposphere is warming. This is exactly what you would expect from temperature shifts driven by changes in the greenhouse effect. Even if solar activity has been in decline, more galactic cosmic radiation would result in more clouds and warmer temperatures. Your mouth breathing is apparently not getting enough oxygen to your brain. Cosmic ray theory is exactly the opposite of your interpretation. The actual theory proposes that more cosmic radiation results in more low-level cloud cover increasing the Earth's reflectivity, and resulting in cooling temperatures, not warming. 
the influence of cosmic rays is theorized to reinforce trends in solar activity, not oppose them. But ice cores show that changes in CO2 always lag changes in global temperatures. CO2 changes are an effect of temperature shifts, not the cause of them. Are you always this stupid, or are you celebrating your birthday? That is exactly what you would expect to see. After all, humans were not around to drive up CO2 levels. Historical climate changes like ice ages and interglacials have been initiated by fluctuations in the Earth's orbit around the Sun, changing the amount of energy received from the Sun over long periods of time. Shifting CO2 levels would then reinforce the initial temperature change resulting in additional warming or cooling. Think of dominoes. You only push the first one. The others fall as a chain reaction. By the way, your shoe is untied. I'm not wearing any shoes. Your brilliance continues to amaze. This does not mean that rising greenhouse gas levels cannot initiate change. Approximately 55 million years ago, during the Paleocene-Eocene Thermo Maximum or PETM, a massive natural release of greenhouse gases caused global temperatures to spike by several degrees in a very short period of time geologically. Now human beings are releasing greenhouse gases at a much faster rate, which is why temperatures in the northern hemisphere are higher now than at any time in the past 1,000 years. I hope you are not talking about the debunked hockey stick graph. You the type of person that gets stuck on escalators. There's not one hockey stick. There's an entire hockey team. Similar results have been obtained across multiple, independent temperature reconstructions examining multiple, diverse temperature proxies, including tree rings, boreholes, stalagmites, and glaciers. In fact, a recent study found that the current simultaneous warming of both the northern and southern hemispheres has never happened before in the last 20,000 years. I refuse to believe that what you're saying is true since it would mean that I would actually have to get off my fat ass and do something. You're right, it's much easier to turn a blind eye and dismiss the warnings of scientific research organizations around the world than it is to face the reality that your actions have consequences. Global temperatures have continued to rise despite multiple natural mechanisms promoting cooling or stasis in the climate system, including declining solar activity, increased galactic cosmic radiation, a cooling Pacific decadal oscillation, a steady and so, and shifting orbital cycles of the Earth around the Sun, all leading back to mankind's influence on the greenhouse effect. What you are saying is ridiculous. You are just making things up in order to push your political agenda. No. Ridiculous is believing in a fairy tale global conspiracy of scientists, politicians, and media bent on global domination through higher taxes and world government with clandestine meetings and secret decoder rings. You probably believe in the chupacabra as well. You have something against the chupacabra? You're a racist. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to wrap up my jigsaw puzzle. After six months, I'm almost done, even though the box says four years.